Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to continue with building the financial model we started a few weeks ago. Let's get started. So if you recall where we last stopped was on the equity returns and project returns exactly in here. So as the model stands today, you have a full and complete model that you can calculate project and equity returns IR. So that's fine. So let's going to start refining the model a little bit. If we scroll down here, you can see there are at least two more sections that we can complete. We're going to do these in the next video. But today what we're going to do, we're going to calculate the we're going to calculate the LCOE and LPPA for these projects. If you don't know what this is, I have a few videos where I explain in details how to calculate LCOE and how to calculate, calculate LPPA and what the difference between one and the other are. So I'm going to share the links in the comments or in the description below and also you can find some links above here in the right corner. So let's going to get started now. I'm going to change here. We have the infrastructure here, but I'm going to make a few changes in here because I don't think this is properly and done. So the first thing you're going to, let's see what we have in here to start with, right? So we have two cost rows in here. We're going to change here. We have the revenue and we have the production, right? So basically to calculate the LCOE, we have to calculate the NPV of the costs divided by the NPV of the production. And for the LPPA, we need to calculate the, the NPV of the revenue and divide it by the, the NPV of the production also. So let's going to just reorder some things in here. We're going to Control X this, and I'm going to copy this in here. So I want to have this number here first. I also need, uh, I do this, I need this number in here. Okay, that's fine. So we have the production here. We have to bring down here uh, the hurdle rates. But before doing that, I'm just going to change these things in here. Okay, we're going to calculate two types of uh, LCOEs. Okay, the, we're going to calculate the LCOE. Let me change here, unlevered. Okay. And we're going to calculate the, oh, that's a misspell, unlevered, unlevered, oops, unlevered, unlevered, and we're going to calculate the levered LCOE, okay? And if you don't know what this is and what lever or geared are, I have a video before on the difference between project and equity returns. I would recommend you to watch to understand what the difference is also, okay? You can also find descriptions or you can find the links in the description below. Oh, by clicking on the link in the video here. So we're going to change this, okay? And also here, what we're going to have, we're going to have the costs for the unlevered project. Again, a mistake in here, or typo. Here we're going to have the cost for the levered, levered project, okay? That's what we're going to have. We're going to have the revenue. There's no difference later in the revenue. And then we're going to have the LPPA and LCOEs in here. So here should be megawatt hour, okay? Because this is the production. And let's going to start bringing the information down here. So what is the production? Let's going to grab the production up here. So equals to, we have the total production in here. I'm going to copy and paste everything across. And here we have it. So that's going to go now for the unlevered costs. Okay, so what are the unlevered costs? Are all costs that would the project would have if there were no levered, no finance to it. So let's see and how to grab this. So we're going to go up here. So what are the costs for the project only? So it's the full capex, right? So it's this number here without the financing fees. So that's the number we're going to use. Then we're going to have the total operating expense. So we have negative numbers in here and negative numbers for the capex. So that's correct. So, but I missed something here. So it should be this plus this then we are going to have the tax but we need to get the ungeared tax or the unlevered tax not this one here but the ungeared one right so i'm going to go below here and in the supporting calculations we have the tax calculation for the ungeared project and we should have this number right here which is also negative number and i think these are all the costs we need for the project okay i might be wrong but it might be this. Let me just double check it in here. Okay, I have to add a plus. So plus, let me go below here and grab the, the number in here. So everything is negative numbers. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to multiply everything by negative one. 
because for the LCOE, what matters and what I want to capture is basically the that every all, all the all the calculations in positive numbers because I want to have a positive LCOE number, right? That's what I want to have when I copy and paste everything across, and that's what we have in here. Okay, so we have the total production in here, and we have the costs which are in here, correct? Now we have two NPV of these things, right? So the NPV formula needs the discount rate, and that's exactly what we're going to have in here. I'm going to add two more rows in here. Let me add one more, okay? And I'm going to bring here the uh, discount rate. The question is, which discount rate to use? And if you go back here to the input sheet, what we have in here, let me go, uh, let me see where the numbers are right here. We have the project hurdle rate and the equity hurdle rate. Okay, so we're going to use these two rates in here. Let me just fix the uh, type one in here. I also want to fix these things in here. So we're going to bring these two things in here. Okay, one we're going to be using for calculating the unlevered LCOE and the other one to calculate the levered LCOE. So let's go my copy, go back here. I'm going to out EST and I'm going to paste link. I just want to copy this format in here, out EST format or T. Enter, so that's what we have. I want to copy this because these are the units, right? And I want to just copy here. Oops, sorry, this one here. And go here and paste it in here, right? Uh, hurdle rate and equity hurdle rate. What's going to be our discount rate? So as I just noticed here, we are using geared and ungeared for the project, as you can see for this financial model. So as you can see in here, so I'm just going to change here just to keep the consistency, okay? The uh, here's going to be ungeared. Here's going to be the geared. And there was a type in there too, okay? Okay, just to, they mean the same thing. It doesn't really matter. So I'm going to just change in here. And now we can calculate the uh, production. So what are we going to have now? We're going to have the NPV. So the NPV is going to be, we're going to use the X NPV formula. Again, I have a video explaining the difference between the NPV and X NPV when was used one over the other. Okay, in this case here, I'm going to use the XNPV. The first thing we need is the rate. I'm going to anchor. Then we're going to grab the production. And then we're going to grab the dates in here. And I'm going to also anchor this thing in here. Close and enter. So that we have. We have, this is our production. And now I'm going to copy control D here. And we have the NPV for our costs. And if now if we make the division between the costs with the production, we get to the LCOE for the ungeared project as $42. Let me fix it here too. Ungeared is going to be the geared. Okay, so that's the number we have in here. That's going to calculate now the geared LCOE, right? So how to do it? The first thing you're going to have to change, we're going to have to calculate the geared costs, right? Which differs from the ungeared uh, costs because now we have to take into consideration the leverage of the project, meaning that we're going to only finance partially the capex because the other part is going to be financed by debt. So just need to get the capex financed by equity. Then we're going to also have to add the interest plus the principal repayment and use the tax for the geared project, which is different from the ungeared one. Watch the previous video of the series so you can see how these two things are calculated, okay? So let's go for it. Equals where the cost. So we're going to go over here. We only need to get the capex finance, which is this information here is the 2.1 million for this period here. Okay. It's a positive number. So that's fine. Then we're going to get what the financing fees. We have to get these two numbers in here because we have some fees on it. Okay. So I'm going to add here uh, this times negative one plus this times negative one. Plus, what's next now? Uh, we're going to grab the operating expense, which is in here. This also needs to be multiplied by negative 1 because it's a negative number. So we got it. Did you get it? And uh, let me see. I-43, sometimes Excel. Yeah, we got it. Sometimes Excel for uh, Mac is really annoying because it doesn't show everything that we are typing the formula. Again, don't use Mac. Okay, use, uh, use Windows. Uh, to do your financial modeling, I do you know, my professional uh, my professional computer is a Windows, just this one here that it's a Mac, but it's not worth for financial modeling. 
So that's what we have here. We have to grab now the geared text page, which, oh gosh, let me go back here. Uh, let me see if I have the number. Or, okay, here we have it. So we have pretty much everything. So now we're going to grab what? We're going to grab the text, which is in here. Where is it? Where is the text? Here, right? That's also negative number. So times negative one plus what? Plus this number here, which is also a negative number. So I think there's only one positive number, which is at the end of the day, this one in here. I'm going to change the formula. And that's, let me just double check. So negative number, negative number in here, negative numbers for this one, positive and negative and negative. Okay, so everything basically is negative number except for the, uh, the equity, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just type here. Oops, I'm going to open here. I'm going to delete this, delete this, delete, delete, and close parentheses in here. I hope this is right. Let me just copy and paste, right? It looked like and should be greater. Of course, the, uh, no, something's wrong here. Something's off. The ungeared cost should be higher than, I guess. Let's see. Doesn't look right to me. Uh, let's see what's missing here. Huh? Mm, so let's see. Is it correct? Let's see. We have the 5 million in here. Okay, we have the capex. Then we have the opex. Then we're going to have the ungeared tax. I think that's it, right? So we have the ungeared tax. Okay. So let me just control it here. Uh, okay, and let me control D in here. And uh, that's clearly wrong because I have to fix or to anchor here. Okay, that's a bit the geared one's a bit lower, right? Okay, so let's see. Cool. So we calculated also the geared uh, LCOE, but that's not really right, right? Because what we need to do actually is to calculate the NPV using the equity hurdle rate because that's we're, we're using the equity hurdle rate to calculate the geared projects, right? So we have to recalculate everything in here. So let me add one line in here. I'm going to just control, control Z, control D, control D here. So this is going to be the production for the ungeared project. This is going to be the production for the geared project and what we're going to have here i'm going to control it here and what we're going to do we're going to just hold on to here and scroll down to just a second to this right here okay so this is what we need right so we need this production in here and also here we have to fix and use the production down here so that's what we have and now we have 37 dollars that makes more sense to me okay Okay, good. So we have these numbers in here now. Uh, let me just double check to see if everything is correct. Everything seems to be correct. And we have these numbers in here. Cool. So let's go to now calculate the LPPA. And for it, we need the revenues, right? So let's going to grab the revenues. Uh, so sorry. The revenue is over here. It's this row here. It's a positive number, so let's gonna copy, copy and paste everything across. We have the revenues in here, and now the same thing, right? We're gonna calculate the LPPA for the geared project or the ungeared first, and then we're gonna calculate the LPPA for the geared project, right? So let's see what's going to happen now, right? Uh, so the LPPA for the geared project it's going to be we have to calculate the NPVs in here. So I'm going to add here, this is going to be, let me just grab the infrastructure in here, base, this is going to be the revenue for geared, sorry, ungeared, right? Well, let me do this following here, control D, and here's going to be the ungeared. Oh, so I'm just going to copy these two informations in here, paste in here, it should be, we should be fine. Yeah, that's correct. Just double check in here to see. Yeah. Okay. So everything's correct here. So we have the NPV for the revenue for the ungeared project, and we have the revenue for the geared project. So let's see what's going to happen now, right? So let me copy this infrastructure here. 
And what we're going to do, we're going to do this number here is going to be equals to this divided by this. And that gives us $80. Let me cop down here for the geared one. And it also gives us $80, as you can see here. And everything is calculated correct. And it's pretty amazing that it's $80 sharp, $80, right? But if you recall, our tariff is also $80, correct? So here we go. We have a tariff of $80. So what's going on here? Why everything's $80, right? So let's let's break it up. So first, what we're going to do, we're going to compare why these two numbers here are the same, okay? Why the LPPA for the ungeared project is the same ones for the geared project. And the reason is very simple. It's because for both calculations, we're using the same cash flows, okay? We're using the production, okay? And we're using the revenue. So the cash flows is the same. So no matter how you discount it, or no matter the discount rate you're going to use, as long as you use the same cash flows to discount everything, sorry, as long as you use the same discount rate to discount the same cash flows, then the result is going to be the same. Nothing's going to change, right? So we're going to have $80 in here. So that's explained. The question is now why the LPPA is equal to the tariff? And the reason is only because we, we're using real uh, calc uh we're using uh real values in here meaning that there is no escalation due to inflation okay and because we have also uh yeah that's basically because of it just because there's no escalation in here so if i'm multiplying here the production by the 80 dollars per megawatt hour when we npv everything back meaning npv the revenue over the production the result is going to be also 80 dollars per megawatt hour okay so that's basically it. so we then can fix this we can basically get rid of this information here and then just delete it right so that's basically it now let's going to think a little bit more here uh i told in my previous video that if you have an lppa that is greater than your lcoe then your project should be considered feasible right so essentially me means if the LPPA is greater or equals to the LCOE, then your project is okay, then it's okay. So that's basically what I told you. The question is now, here it's pretty straightforward to the side, right? Okay, so that's a good project because we have an LPPA of 80 and our cost for the ungeared projects for the geared, for the geared ones 37, which also makes sense, right? So, uh, would you go, so this is a straightforward answer. So yeah, the project is feasible, let's go for it, right? The question is, what if this number here were to be 40? Would you go ahead with the project, right? This is a bit more trickier question, right? And I would tend to say that the project is not feasible because I would always compare against the ungeared LCOE, meaning that we're considering all the costs to the projects, uh, excluding financial fees versus or vis-a-vis -vis the revenue of the project, okay? But to be sure about it, that's the case where you cannot use LPPAs or LCOEs to take any decision. In fact, you should never ever do it. You should always calculate the NPV of the cash flows available to the, pro to the project and to the equity investors as we did in here, okay? And let me just go here. So you should be using these numbers in here, okay? So if the number in here, the RR to the project is greater than the hurdle rate, then it should be ready to go for the project, okay? The same for the equity investors in here, okay? For the equity returns. If the equity return RR is greater than the hurdle rate for the equity, equity hurdle rate, we should go for it. So I hope you have enjoyed the video. Uh, please give us a thumbs up. Ask me a question if you have any doubts about this. And I look forward to see you in the next video. See you. Bye.